And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, O oh, a truth, thou art the Son of God. Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 33, the word of God for God's people in the church day, amen. Amen. At this time, it is our time for prayer, a time that we give reverence to the Almighty God. Just thanking him for who he is, thanking him for all that he has done. But we also know that this is time for intercessory prayer, to stand in the gap for those who are in need. When I woke up this morning and I grabbed my phone, CNN had an alert of a, another mass shooting, I think it was over um, in Africa, where 14, I believe 14 people, someone just went into a bar, opened up shooting, and 14 people were shot and killed, and I believe nine or four others were injured. So we know that across the land, and not just in our community, not just in our state, or just within the U.S., but just looking across the land, Globally, there is much that we as believers, people of faith, that we can just stand in the gap praying for and just trusting and believing that God is in the midst of it all, that God is still God. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory, Father, for an amazing day. God, we thank you for all that your hand has provided. We thank you, Father, that even in the midst of darkness, that you still shine bright. So, Lord, we just give you glory and we thank you, God, for all that you have done. And we thank you, God, that you are our healer, that you are our savior, that you are our redeemer, our way maker, our comforter. God, whatever it is, Father, that we need, we thank you, Lord, that it's all within you. God, that whatever situation, God, that we may be dealing with, God, that is all we get on left, God, for you to reach us and grab us. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, for those who have come out to your house of worship on a rainy day, Lord, God, that they didn't find the robbery, Lord, God, and they still came out, God, to give glory to you. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, God, for the hearts of your people, Lord, who continue to print their way out, Lord, God. Even those who may be joining us virtually, Lord God, we thank you for those who have logged on, God, to still come together, Lord God, that we may be one. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, for those across the land, that so many families, God, are grieving, God, that so many have lost loved ones. Father, we just pray right now, in the name of Jesus, that you, Lord God, would be each person where they are. God, in whatever pain, whatever brokenness, whatever void, God, that they may be feeling, whatever heavy burden that someone is carrying right now, Lord, we just lay it at your feet, Lord God. We surrender, Father, to you, asking God that you just continue to be God, to continue, Lord, to be the loving Father, that you continue, Father, to pour out your grace and your mercy upon us. Father, we pray for those who even are among us who may have sickness in their body. Lord, we speak healing right now in the name of Jesus, that you touch each person, God, connected, Lord, in this place and connected to us, God. That we ask that you touch each person, God, from their head to their feet. We ask, Lord, God, that you regulate blood pressure, that you touch heart, touch kidney, touch lungs, God, that you touch every part of my body. Lord, even the aching muscles, God, whatever it is, God, that someone is dealing with, God, we know that it is not too hard for you. So, Lord, we just ask that the Spirit of God will be that soothing medicine, that soothing bomb, God, that that person needs. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we exalt you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Lord, we just say all our name, glory to you, for there's nobody like you, now, and we thank you. 
for them to be able to lean on him. When we tired and we are weary, he let us lean on him. Amen, amen, amen. My Lord, thank you. It's a lot, bro. So, <laughs> at this morning, we read from Matthew chapter 14. We were in the New Testament. And scripture, Matthew 14. And we are in the passage where Jesus walked on water. We read verses 22 through 33. I want to look up for 22 Again, chapter 13, 22, 23, and I'm going to jump down to 29. And the word of God reads, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he, come out Jesus, went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 29, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And I want to lift up for a subject on this morning, responding to the call. Responding to the call. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that you are already here because, God, you are everywhere. But, Lord, I invite the Spirit of God, the power of God, the anointing of God to come right now, Lord God. Lord, this is your preaching moment, your opportunity. And I pray, Father, for you to use me for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Responding to the call, we all, all of us, were created or created for a purpose. There is something that God has placed down on the inside of us. There is something that God is asking each of us to do, and he has even equipped us with himself in order for us to accomplish what he wants us to do. Whatever each person's uh, purpose is or calling is, it looks different for each of us, but it also looks different depending on the season that you're in. Colossians chapter 1 reminds us that we all have a purpose and a destiny, and that God created us in his likeness through him, but also for him. So not only should there be a response to our purpose or the purpose that God has called us for, but there shall also be a response to salvation. How have you, how have I been responding to our calling? In the text, Jesus demonstrated his authority by walking on water. Now, prior to this event, we learned on last week that Jesus had fed 5,000 by multiplying fish and bread. And then he turned around and used the disciples to distribute it to the people. Now, remember, the, the disciples, they could not see how they could feed so many people with so little resources. But in the end, they ended up with 12 baskets left over. So again, Jesus taught them that he can take just a little bit, that he can multiply it and still have more than enough. Jesus' disciples were not the only ones that he was teaching about trust and obedience. His disciples were not the only ones that he was teaching about trusting in the Messiah. I remember the Spirit of God reminded me 
reminded me on last night as I was um, meditating. Our family went to uh, Myrtle Beach a couple of years ago. We had spent Thanksgiving at the beach. And my cousin, Mary, as always, we were sitting on the balcony. And believe it or not, we were there uh, listening to music. We were working on something for ministry. And as we were out down below, there was a swimming pool. And the children were out there. You could hear the, the water splashing. You could hear them screaming and, and playing. But there was a, two little boys. There was one who was in the pool. Then he got out and he stood on the side. And there was another little boy who kept jumping in the water. He'll get out. He'll run around. Jump back in the water. Get out. Run around, jump back in the water. But this other little boy, this particular boy who was standing on the side, was afraid to jump in because he could not swim. He was just standing on the side by the pool. As we were sitting there, the little boy was trying to kept running around and jumping in, was trying to encourage the other little boy. And Mary said, Sam, did you hear that? I say, no, what is it? I missed it. The other little boy told the one who was standing by the pool, just standing there, afraid. He said, let yourself go and trust Jesus. Let yourself go and trust Jesus. And before you know it, when I jumped up and looked, and looked out, both the little boys was jumping in Get down, run back around, and jump in. All because one child told another child to let yourself go and trust Jesus. A child encouraging another child to just let yourself go. Just let the cares of this world, let the burdens that you have been dealing with, just let it go and trust God. Just let it go and trust Jesus. And you'll find yourself jumping into situations that you thought were impossible all because you trusted Jesus. The disciples were out in a boat as instructed by Jesus. I read 22 and 23 because I wanted us to understand that Jesus sent the disciples away. It's in the middle of the night that they got caught in a storm. So I want you to know that responding in obedience to what God has called you to do will sometimes lead you into a storm. They were obedient with what Jesus told them to do and then found themselves in the midst of a storm. Jesus come to them. But the disciples look out and guess what? They thought they were seeing a ghost. We don't always, y'all, see things clearly when we're going through a storm. We don't always see things clearly when difficult seasons come. When we allow anxiety, when we allow fear to rise up, sometimes, y'all, we miss Jesus walking on the water in our lives. Sometimes we miss Jesus being in the midst of our presence because we have become consumed with anxiety and fear. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, he said, if it's you, then bid me to come to you on the water. Jesus said one word, come. Jesus said, come. Peter started walking, but he got distracted and began to sink. Then turned around and asked the one person that he was afraid of to save him. We get consumed, we become afraid, and then we turn around. The one person that we were doubting, Jesus, ends up being the same person that we still call on, Lord, save me. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, touch me. The first thing, well, let me back up. In the text, this 
Tonight is still just another event that Jesus used to perform a miracle in order to show us that he can be trusted. So it's a deeper meaning, a deeper lesson within this text. There's a lesson on responding to the call, but also trusting in Jesus. So I want you to walk with me for just a moment this morning. The first thing that Jesus teaches us is that sometimes, y'all, we just have to dismiss the crowd. God is calling us for a purpose. There's a calling on our lives just because we are followers of Jesus Christ. He has a purpose for us because we have surrendered our lives to him. Sometimes we have to learn to streamline our connection. You can't entertain everybody that walks up to you. You can't stay attached to everybody that you've known for the last 25 years. When it comes to your family, you can't help, you can't save everybody 24 hours, seven days a week. Everywhere that Jesus went, everywhere that Jesus went, y'all, there was a large crowd. For you, you're the only one that everybody keeps calling on. You're the only one that people keep depending on. But just like Jesus, sometimes you have to dismiss the crowd. Sometimes you have to streamline your connection. In the opening text in verse 22 and 23, Jesus told the disciples, he said, I need you all to go ahead of me. Go ahead and get on the boat, and I want you to travel to the other side. The text says that he sent the multitudes away. So Jesus didn't just send, a, send away the disciples. He sent away the large crowd. And Jesus went away to pray. The people who followed Jesus were sent away. Now I'm going to tell you what really blessed me when I was reading this text. It's a lesson that a long time is necessary. It's a lesson that prayer time is necessary. It's a lesson that self-care and peace of mind is necessary. Responding to the call and fulfilling our purpose required, is mandated, is mandatory that you and I have a long time with the Almighty God. We have to be protective of our faith. Be careful who you allow in your inner circle. It doesn't matter how busy we are. It doesn't matter how many tasks we have on our to-do list. We have to make God our top priority. Now think about it. If Jesus, the Son of God, made time, made him, a priority, you know that we have to separate ourselves from other people in order to spend time with God. So there was no excuse for Jesus and there's no excuse for us. I want you to remember that it's hard to hear what God is telling us. It's hard to get directions from God when we keep responding to other people's voices when we keep responding to other people's needs, when we keep responding to what other people want, because they're trying to make their priority our priority. Don't allow the noise from your life to drown out the voice of God. Let me say that again. Don't allow the noise from your life to drown out the voice of God. There is something that is refreshing or refueling when we spend time alone with God. We gain new energy. We gain new insight. We look at things differently. And we're not easily moved when we're on the boat and think that we're out in the storm by ourselves. 
like the one here in Matthew chapter 14, where Jesus took time and he went away to pray. Jesus took time and he went away to pray. Jesus had to go away to pray because everybody was not receptive to his teaching. Not everybody was on believing that Jesus is the Messiah, the long-awaited King. So I want you to remember that everyone that you're connected to, they're not going to be your, your cheerleader. They're not going to be there to support you. Everybody's not going to support your vision. Everybody's not going to support your gift or your talent. So stop allowing other people's demand to become top priority. Learn to streamline your connection and dismiss the crowd. Not only do we learn to dismiss the crowd, but secondly, you and I need to learn to take hold of our territory. Take hold of your territory. What does that mean? Take hold of your territory means that you are to take hold of the promises of God. That means that you got to get up early and command your day. That means that you need to start declaring what God declared. That means that you got to stand on what you know to be true. That means that sometimes, a lot of times, we got to issue eviction notices to say whatever is necessary for us to stay in alignment with God, we need to do it. As we move through the events of walking on the water, Jesus is alone. The disciples were about three miles out to sea. When they encountered a storm, it was the fourth watch of the night. That means that it was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And a lot of events and miracles occurred between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And Jesus walking on water was one of them. But I want you, not only does miracles happen during this time, but spiritual warfare also takes place. Why? Because Satan is always on his job. Sometimes we got to learn. You know, have you ever been um, between 3 and 6 a.m.? The spirit wake you up. You like, mm, it ain't time to get up. You try to roll over and get that few minutes extra sleep, get that two hours more sleep. But then the spirit won't let you rest. The spirit won't allow you to go back to sleep. The next morning, between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., you back up again and wondering, what is it? Why can't I rest? And you think that something is wrong. The Spirit of God spoke to me and said, sometimes we have to sacrifice, we have to fast that extra sleep, that extra 30 minutes of sleep that we want, because the Spirit of God is telling us that we need to get up and we need to pray. We have to sacrifice our physical rest in order to get spiritually equipped. When you're getting up, it's a reason. It's not that you don't make too much of it. It's not that you don't make too much. When the Spirit of God, when you start waking up at a certain time, God, the Holy Spirit, is speaking to you. And he's telling you, get up and pray. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us during this time, it's very significant. And I know that I've been guilty of waking up and I try to turn over myself to get that few minutes extra sleep, but guess what? I'm laying there with my eyes closed, but I'm still awake trying to figure out now what I'm going to do for the next couple of hours because it's almost time to get up. Pay attention to the awakening. Just like Jesus was doing, God is calling us to seek him, to pray, to pray and intercede for other people. Well, I don't know who to pray for. It's okay. God knows who to pray for. You just pray, Lord, whoever it is that needs a touch from you. Lord, I pray in agreement with you, asking that you touch them. Lord, I pray for healing from whoever is sick and going through a tough time. It's the fourth watch of the night, and we have to take hold 
soul of our territory. We got to get up early and command our day. Well, how do I command my day? Father, I thank you for this new day. Father, I put on the whole armor of God, and I am armed with the word of God. Father, I thank you that you are my creator, my sustainer, my redeemer, my healer, my waymaker, my protector, my refuge, and my fortress. God, whatever it is that I need, God, I know that your hand will provide. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every demon has to loosen their hands from me. I declare Satan that you got to flee because you're not welcome here anymore. I declare that every plan that the enemy has set before me is canceled in the name of Jesus. I take hold of my territory. I take back, I take back my peace. I take back my joy. I take back my health and my family. I take back everything that the enemy thought that he stole from me. And I declare on this day that I walk in my purpose. I declare that I'm blessed in my coming and in my going. I declare that I am the head and not the tail. That I am the lender and not the borrower. I declare that I am the thought and light of the earth. That's how you get up and command your death. That's how you put Satan on notice and let him know that whatever it is that he's trying to do, that every attack is canceled. The Bible says that the weapon of form, but it won't prosper. During the particular event, the disciples found themselves in the middle of the storm. Jesus, where is Jesus out? He's on the mountain praying. Have you ever found yourself being obedient but caught in a storm? And I want to remind you, don't miss the fact that Jesus is on the mountain praying, interceding on your behalf. Don't miss that Jesus, when the storm was at his work, that Jesus was walking on the rough waters of your life coming to you. You thought that you was out in the water left to fend for yourself. But Jesus already knew what time that he had to come off the mountain to save you. The songwriter said that he may not come when you want it. But it's always on time. The Lord said in Isaiah 43 and 2, he said, when you pass through the waters, he said, I'll be with you. When you pass through the river, the river, they will not oversweep you. You are never too far out to see. And in the middle of a storm, that our Jesus cannot get to you. Let me say that again. You're never too far out on your boat, too far out in the sea. And that storm is never too strong that Jesus cannot get to you. The last thing, the third thing that I want to remind you of is when you're responding to the call, you have to dismiss the crowd. You have to take hold of your territory. But the third thing that you have to do is to stay in faith. When the disciples saw Jesus walking toward them, they thought initially that he was a ghost. Jesus spoke to them and he said, have courage. He said, it's I, it's me. You don't have to be afraid. God tells us over and over that he is with us. That we don't have to fear, but we still in our human nature, we still question God. Peter even said, Lord, if it's you, just command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. How often do we see and we hear God telling us to come and we still respond, Lord? Show me a sign. Lord, it is you. Bid me to come. 
Jesus, he said, come. He said, I just need you to trust me. You don't have to be afraid anymore. But just like Peter, if this is you, if it's you, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Peter, y'all, it was the, the Bible says that disciples with the air. So there was more than just Peter who was on that boat. But Peter climbed out on the boat, started walking to Jesus. But because of the rough waters, he started thinking, how many of us are on the boat with a lot of people? We step out on the water, walking toward Jesus, being obedient to what he called us to do. But then we're distracted by the rough waters. We're distracted by the wind. And then we start thinking. We cannot let one know. We cannot let rejection. We cannot let one closed door discourage us. We can't allow our dreams and our vision continuously lie in dormant because we see too many ways and too many steps and too much time involved and too much money. We're just making excuses after excuses why we cannot walk in our purpose. We allow our family to remain distant we allow our family to maintain broken relationships because we got too much pride to apologize and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. We have become comfortable in our depression because we don't want to receive professional help. We don't want people to know that we're going through a tough time. I want to encourage somebody today to step out of the boat in faith. Being a follower of Jesus Christ, it does not exempt us from storm. We can step out on the water with Jesus, believing him to do the impossible and to make it possible. In verse 26, when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water, they were terrified. But in 29, Peter was the only Step out of the boat. That just tells us that we have to start somewhere. We have to take a step of faith. As I close, at the close of the story, Peter started thinking because he got distracted. He allowed the strength, listen to this, he allowed the strength of the storm to overshadow who he knew God to be. Who he needed Jesus to be. Whatever it is that God is calling you to do, he's right there with you. The Holy Spirit spoke as I was reading back through the scripture. Peter told Jesus, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And we know that Jesus said, come. But the Holy Spirit revealed that God is not going to call you into something. He's not going to lead you into a situation and he's not already there. Peter wouldn't call, um, Jesus would not call Peter out into the rough water and he wasn't there with him to keep him, to protect him. Jesus is already on the rough waters. He's there with us. He's calling for us. But some of us in there still just standing. If you're Peter today, that really y'all just let me. Just close your eyes for a moment. Just close your eyes for a moment. I have to do it sometimes because it's just visual. And just imagine yourself out on the boat. You out there on the ocean. You don't see no land. A storm comes up. You on there with a group of people. Jesus is on the water. You look out. He's like, oh my. It's a ghost. 
and you're talking amongst yourself, like, what are we going to do? The ship is rocking back and forth. The waves get stronger and stronger. The rain is falling harder and harder. The ghost that you're seeing is actually Jesus. You're Peter. You look out, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus is standing there, and he's telling you, come. Are you going to stay on the boat, talking about your problems, talking about what's wrong, talking about how strong the winds are, how strong the waves are? Oh, we're going to drown, we're going to die. Are you going to stay on the boat, or are you going to take a step of faith? Your eyes are closed. The storm is raging around you, whatever it is that you're dealing with, can you see yourself in faith stepping out on the rough waters, walking to Jesus? Jesus is saying to you today, whatever it is that you're dealing with, he don't care how strong it is. He don't care how rough it is. He said, come. Whatever your situation is, Jesus is saying to you, come. But you have to hold your head up and look straight ahead to Jesus. You can't look down and see what's down there, at sharks in the water. You can't be worried about the water trying to overtake you. You might be swaying side to side, but you got to look straight ahead. Are you willing on today to take a step of faith, to step out of the boat, step out of your problems, step out of your storm, step out of your trials? And try Jesus. Are you willing on today to walk to Jesus? Stand to your feet. If there is one today who does not have a relationship with the Lord, would you receive him on today? If there is one, if you are joining us virtually and you desire to re receive a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can drop it in um, the chat or Message us on our social media platforms and we will get back with you. But it's just, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I receive you today, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior. It's nothing magical about it. It's about a growing relationship with Jesus. Will there be one today that you want to come to Jesus? Anyone today? And there is one today that you are on the boat but you're having trouble. Sometimes other times you want to get back in because you think it's safer. But if you desire prayer today, then you may come to the altar. You may just raise your hand where you are if you desire prayer. Anyone on today? And then there's one if you are seeking a church home and you've been joining us or fellowship with us and you want to become a member. Of the William Chapel A. Zion Church, and we welcome you home. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for reminding us to respond to the call. Father, I touch and agree right now in the name of Jesus that every person whose hand is raised, every heart that is heavy, Lord, every burden, God, that somebody is carrying. Lord, on today, we, in the name of Jesus, we dismiss the crowd. Lord, today we are going to streamline our connection. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak and declare that every person right now take back and take hold of their territory. That they take back, God, everything that we have given. And it didn't steal it all, some stuff we just gave away. But Lord, we come to you, repenting of all of our sins, asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will forgive us. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. And Father, from this day forth, I ask that we go forth taking a step of faith, coming to you, walking with you, regardless of how rough and how tough the storms may be. In Jesus' name, and let the church say amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Responding to the crowd. Excuse me, responding to the call. Dismiss the crowd, take hold of your territory, and stay in faith. At this time, we will have our offering. 
if you are joining us uh, virtually, we do have Gimbalfi on the Reeves Chapel Amy Zion Church in Carlisle, South Carolina. We also have Cash App, Williams with the Dance Chapel 203. Williams, Williams Chapel 203. And want to thank each of you again in advance for always supporting the ministry here at Williams Chapel. <laughs>